Hello, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is that light of life. Welcome to part two of the mystery of the fig tree. We're going to go to Isaiah, the book of Isaiah. Probably the most quoted book in the New Testament. And uh, we're going to see what Isaiah has to say. The figs. All right, let's take a look. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 1. Come near, ye nations. There's that word nations again. Do you know that? That is the same root word that Gentiles is translated from. Yeah, when you look in the Old Testament, the word Gentile and nations is the same word. It's just sometimes the King James translator has decided to use Gentiles, and sometimes they decided to use the word nations to describe the same root word in Hebrew, which is goyim. So if you ever hear a Jew call you a goyim, He's trying to call you a Gentile, but sometimes it just means nations, you know. Come ye, ye nations, to hear and hearken. Ye people, let the earth hear and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations. What is indignation? Extreme hatred. Look it up in the dictionary if you don't believe me. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. Now, this hasn't happened yet. I mean, this is like tied in with the book of Revelation when Christ returns. But yet the Lord speaks of the future as if it's past already. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. Their slain shall be cast out, and their stink shall come out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved. And the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. Isn't this, this is exactly the same language in the book of Revelation. We're going to go there right after this verse. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their host shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. All right, contrast this with Revelation chapter 6, which is future. Verse 12, Revelation 6, 12. And I beheld when he had opened, opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven, the hosts of heaven, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree, Casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll. If you don't know what a scroll is, you look inside the word S C R O L L, you see roll. Well, that's what a scroll is. It's it's a roll. It's like a roll of paper towels, and you 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 spread it out on a table and unroll it, right? And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. I mean, this is right out of Joel. This is right out of Isaiah. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. Why? Because they know the lamb of the lion of the tribe of Judah, not the lamb. The lion of the tribe of Judah is coming. And they're all going to be slain. Back to Isaiah, verse 5. Let's see. Uh, that was Isaiah 34. 
Okay. Verse 4. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved. Doesn't Peter, I think it's Second Peter, it says that the, uh, the earth will melt with fervent heat. Oh yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be burned up, melted away. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. And all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth off the vine, and as a falling fig from a fig tree. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea. That was Esau, the Edomites. And upon the people of my curse to judgment. Do you know that God has a people of his curse? And upon the people of my curse to judgment. How would you like to be a people God cursed? If you don't know why, read my go to my playlist, Genesis 6, the sons of God. They married intermarried with the Canaanites, people. People, uh, you know, when you intermarried with the Canaanites who were children of the fallen angels, you're part human and part devil. And upon the people of my curse to judgment, the sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats and with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord hath a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. And the unicorns shall come down with them and the bullocks with the bulls and their land shall be soaked with blood and their dust made fat with fatness. Unicorns. Don't be looking at a horse with a horn sticking out of its head. No. You know what the unicorn is? It was the black Asian rhinoceros. It's even its name is unicornus, rhinoceros, rhinoceros. It's got one horn. African rhinos have got two horns. Asian rhinos have got one horn. Just like in, uh, the Asian or Indian elephant and the African elephant. You know what the difference is? An Asian elephant, you can train from when they're little and they'll use their trunks and help you move logs and do work. An African elephant will stomp you to death. That's the difference between, you know, the two different kinds. So what can I tell you? Verse 8. For it is the day, the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone. And the land thereof shall be, um, let's see, and the land thereof shall become burning pitch. Pitch is just, um, pitch is like tar. You ever see tar burning? It shall not be quenched day or night. The smoke thereof shall go up forever from generation to generation. The smoke thereof shall go up forever and ever. Didn't we read about that in Revelation? The lake of fire? Oh, yeah. See, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to read the Bible. The whole thing, from cover to cover. Um, I did it in a matter of months, first time. It shall not be quenched night nor day, the smoke Thereof shall go up forever, from generation to generation it shall lie waste, none shall pass through it forever and ever. But the cumarant and the bittern shall possess it, the owl also and the raven shall dwell in it, and he shall stretch out upon it the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness. They sh shall call the nobles thereof to the kingdom, but none shall be there, and all her princes shall be nothing. And thorns shall come up in her palaces, and nettles and brambles in the fortresses thereof, and it shall be an habitation of dragons, dragons, and a court for owls. The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island, and the satyr, S-A-T-Y-R, shall cry to his fellow. The screech owl also shall rest there and find for a place, and find for herself a place of rest. Now, I don't put a lot of stock in it, but a satyr, S-A-T-Y-R, was a type of hybrid. It had the 
waist down it was a goat and from the waist up it was a man i don't know how true that is you know i think there was probably genetic modification back in the old days before the flood maybe after i don't know and this word screech owl in the bible the word is lilith and the witches of the world revere lilith the goddess they also call her gaia mother earth and the Jews also go absolutely crazy over Lilith. They claim that she was the first wife of Adam before Eve. Where do they get that in the Bible? They don't. It's, you know, the Bible says, pay no heed to Jewish fables. Well, there you go. But it's in their Talmud, in their Kabbalah. Verse 15. There shall the great owl make her nest and lay and hatch and gather under her shadow. There shall the vultures also be gathered, every one with her mate. Seek ye out. Here's some good advice. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No, no one of these shall fail. None. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them. Read the book of the Lord, people. You're being told right here. Verse 17. And he hath cast the lot for them, and his hand hath divided it unto them by line. They shall possess it forever. From generation to generation shall they dwell therein. See, these are the righteous. First, the Lord says he's going to destroy the wicked. But then he says he's going to gather us up, and we're going to possess it forever. All right, Isaiah chapter 38, verse 19. The living... The living, he shall praise thee as I do this day. The father to the children shall make known thy truth. The Lord was ready to save me. Therefore, we will sing my songs to the stringed instruments all the days of our life in the house of the Lord. For Isaiah had said, let them take a lump of figs. Let them take a lump of figs and lay it for a plaster upon the boil and he shall recover. And Hezekiah also had said, What is the sign that I shall go up to the house of the Lord? Uh, we read this in the other previous part one of the study. Uh, I think it was in Chronicles, but, you know, sometimes they overlap a little bit. All right, Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 15. Jeremiah is a book of judgment against a wicked people. Judah, verse 15, lo, and think about modern day America and Europe when you read this, lo, I will bring a nation upon you from far, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. It is a mighty nation. It is an ancient nation, a nation whose language thou knowest not, neither understandeth what they say. People, go to Miami. You don't know what the, they're saying down there. Miami is, they don't even speak English down there. You think I'm joking around? or No, I'm not joking around. Go to, go to most major cities. Their quiver as an open sepulcher. They are all mighty men. They shall eat up, they shall eat up thine harvest. The enemy is going to come in and, and eat your harvest. And thy bread, which thy sons and thy daughters should eat. They shall eat up thy flocks and thine herds. They shall eat up thy vines and thy fig trees. Is that spiritual, literal, or both? The vines was Israel and figs were Judah. They shall eat you up. They shall impoverish thy fenced cities when thou trustest with the sword. Nevertheless, in those days, saith the Lord, I will not make a full end with you. So it's not going to be a full end. It's going to be a partial end. And it shall come to pass when ye shall say, Wherefore doeth the Lord our God all these things unto us? Then shalt thou answer them, Like as ye have forsaken me and served strange gods in your land. So shall ye serve strangers in a land. 
that is not yours? Has America and Europe served strange gods? Oh yeah. Declare this, verse 20, Declare this in the house of Jacob and publish it in Judah, saying, Hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, which have eyes and see not. You're blind. You got eyes, but you're blind spiritually. Which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not, because you're deaf to hearing the truth. Oh, you can hear the birds singing, but you can't hear the voice of the Lord, you idiots. Fear ye not me, saith the Lord. Will ye not tremble at my presence, which have place the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree that it cannot pass pass it and through the waves were there, thereof toss themselves? Yet can they not prevail, though they roar. Yet can they not pass over it? But this people have a revolting and a rebellious heart. They are revolted and gone. Neither say they are in their heart. Let us now fear the Lord our God that giveth rain both the former and the latter, in his season he reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Your iniquities, that's sin, people, that's evil. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholden good things from you. For among my people are found wicked men. They lay wait as he that setteth snares. They set a trap. They catch men. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore they are become great and waxen rich. They are waxen fat, they shine. Yea, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. They judge not the cause, the cause of the fatherless. Yeah, they don't care about the, the orphans. Yet they prosper, and the right of the needy do they not judge. Shall I not visit for these things, saith the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means, and my people love to have it so. And what will you do in the end thereof? The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means, and my people love to have it so. And what will you do in the end thereof? Jeremiah 8, verse 11. For they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people, slightly saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Why? They, they weren't ashamed of anything. And what people can blush, people? Take a guess. Neither could they blush. Therefore shall they fall among them at fall. In the time of their visitation shall they be cast down, saith the Lord. I will surely consume them, saith the Lord. There shall be no grapes on the vine nor figs on the fig tree. And the leaf shall fade, and the things that I have given them shall pass away from them. Why do we sit still? Assemble yourselves, and let us enter into the defensive city, and let us be silent there. For the Lord our God hath put us to silence, and given us water of gall to drink. What did they give Christ on the cross? Didn't they give him vinegar with gall? Oh, yeah. For the Lord our God hath put us to silence and given us water of gall to drink because we have sinned against the Lord. Jeremiah 24, verse 1. The Lord showed me, and behold, two baskets of figs were set before the temple of the Lord. After that, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had carried away captive Jehoi Je Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and the princes of Judah with the carpenters and smiths from Jerusalem and had brought them to Babylon. You see, God was so angry with Jerusalem that he uh, had them carried away in captive. Slavery. Verse 2. One basket had very good figs, even like the figs that are first ripe, 
and the other basket had very naughty figs, which could not be eaten because they were so bad. Naughty? You know, haven't you ever heard the Christmas song, Satan knows when you've been naughty and when you've been nice? Oh, yeah. Now, is this a figuratively? Then said the Lord unto me, What seest thou, Jeremiah? And I said, Figs, the good figs, very good, and the evil, very evil, that cannot be eaten. They are so evil. Did you know that Judah intermarried with the Canaanites? The children of the devil? You got the good figs, and you got the evil figs. Verse 4. Again the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Like these good figs, so will I acknowledge them that are carried away captive of Judah, whom I have sent out of this place into the land of the Chaldeans for their good. For I will set mine eyes upon them for good, and I will bring them again to this land. See, after 70 years, God brought them back. You can read that in Ezra and Nehemiah. And I will bring them again to this land, and I will build them and not pull them down, and I will plant them and not pluck them up. And I will give them an heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return unto me with their whole heart. And as the evil figs, which cannot be eaten, they are so evil. Surely, thus saith the Lord, so will I give Zedekiah, the king of Judah, and his princes, and the residue of Jerusalem that remaineth in the land, and them that dwell in the land of Egypt. All right, uh, let's see. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 15. Because ye have said, the Lord hath raised us up prophets in Babylon, know that thus saith the Lord, saith the Lord of the king that sitteth upon the throne of David, and of all the people that dwelleth in the city, and of your brethren that are not gone forth with you into captivity. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will send upon them the sword, war, the famine, and the pestilence, disease, and will make them like vile figs that cannot be eaten. They are so evil. And I will persecute them with the sword, with the famine, and with the pestilence, and will deliver them to be removed to all the kingdoms of the earth to be a curse and an astonishment and a hissing and a reproach among all nations whither I have driven them. The evil figs. Hmm. They're to be a curse and a reproach among all nations whither I have driven them. Think about who that is, people. Hosea chapter 2, verse 10. And now will I discover her lewdness. Talking about Israel. Her lewdness in the sight of her lovers, and none shall deliver her out of mine hand. I will also cause all her mirth to cease, her feast days, her new moons, and her Sabbaths, and all her solemn feasts. Are these God's holy days, or are these the satanic holidays? You know, in Ezekiel, you had people weeping for Tammuz. Tammuz was tied in with Easter. You know, when, when people tell you that Easter was given to the church by the Catholics, don't believe it. The Jews were celebrating Easter in the book of Ezekiel. That was Old Testament. Christ hadn't even been born yet in his human body. I will also cause all her mirth to cease, her feast days, her new moons, and her Sabbaths, and all her solemn feasts. And I will destroy her vines, Israel, and her fig trees, Judah, whereof she has said, These are my rewards that my lovers have given me, and I will make them a forest, and the beasts of the field shall eat them. And I will visit upon her the days of Balaam, the false satanic god, wherein she burned incense to them, and she decked herself with her earrings and with her jewels, and she went after her lovers, and forget me, saith the Lord. Yep, they went after Satan, Balaam. Hosea chapter 9, verse 8. The watchman of Ephraim was with my God, but the prophet is a snare and a fowler in all his ways, and 
hatred in the house of his God. They have deeply corrupted themselves, as in the days of Gibeah. Therefore, he will remember their iniquity. He will visit their sins. That don't sound too good, does it? I found Israel, listen carefully, I found Israel like grapes in the wilderness. I found Israel like grapes in the wilderness. Okay? I saw your fathers as the first ripe in the fig tree at her first time. But they went to Baal, Peor, and separated themselves unto that shame, and their abominations were as were according as they loved. See, Israel, I found Israel like grapes in the wilderness. Okay? Verse 11, As for Ephraim, that's the chief tribe in Israel, not Judah, their glory shall fly away like a bird from the birth and from the wound and from the conception. All right, this is uh, the reason why I had to do the fig tree before I did the Joel uh, study, which I haven't done yet, but it's on my list. I got a lot of things on the list. Joel chapter 1, verse 10. The field is wasted, the land mourneth, for the corn is wasted, the new wine is dried up, the oil languisheth. Hmm, okay. Be ye shamed. O ye husbandmen. What's a husbandman? That's somebody that takes care of a vineyard or a field. You know, it's like a farm worker, right? Be ye ashamed. O ye husbandmen. Howl. O ye vine dressers. V-I-N-E. Vine dressers. For the wheat and for the barley, because the harvest of the field is perished. The vine is dried up. And the fig tree languisheth. The pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the apple tree, even all the trees of the field are withered because joy is withered away from the sons of men. Gird yourselves and lament, ye priests. Howl, ye ministers of the altar. The altar, come, lie all night in sackcloth. What did that mean? Sackcloth was uncomfortable clothing. When a king took off his nice, soft, comfortable clothes and put on sackcloth and covered his head with ashes, it was a sign of humility and mourning and being sorry, sorrow. Howl, ye ministers of the altar, come lie all night in sackcloth, ye ministers of my God, for the meat offering and the drink offering is withholden from the house of your God, the house of your God, not the God of the Bible necessarily. Joel chapter 2, verse 20. But I will remove far off from you the northern army, that was Assyria, I believe, and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the utmost sea, and his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he hath done great things. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the trees beareth her fruit. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Parallelism. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice, rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. Uh, Amos, chapter 4, verse 7. Amos is another chapter of uh, book of rebuke. Verse 7. And also I have withholden the rain from you when there were yet three months to the harvest. And I caused it to rain upon one city, and caused it not to rain upon another city. One piece was rained upon, and the piece 
whereupon it rained not withered. So two or three cities wandered unto one city to drink water, but they were not satisfied. Yet have they not, yet have they not returned unto me, saith the Lord. I have smitten you with blasting and mildew when your gardens and your vineyards and your fig trees and your olive trees increased, the palmer worm devoured them. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. I have sent among you the pestilence after the manner of Egypt. Remember the plagues that Moses pronounced upon Egypt? I have sent among you the pestilence after the manner of Egypt. Your young men have I slain with the sword and have taken away your horses and have made the stink of your camps to come up under your nostrils. Nostrils, Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Micah chapter 4, verse 1. But it shall come to... But it... I'm sorry. But in the last days... Prophecy, people. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow unto it. And many nations shall come and say, Come, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, and to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his path, his paths. For the law shall go forth of Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. For the law shall go forth of Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Ever hear people tell you that the law was all nailed to the cross? Well, I don't know what to tell them. Verse 3, And he shall judge among many people, and rebuke strong nations afar off, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. But they shall sit every man under his vine, under his vine, and under his fig tree, <clears throat> and none shall make them afraid. For the mouth of the Lord of hosts hath spoken it. For all people will walk, every one in the name of his God, and we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. In that day, saith the Lord, I will assemble her that halteth, and I will gather her that is driven out, and her that I have afflicted. And I will make her that halted a remnant, and her that was cast far off a strong nation. And the Lord shall reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth, even forever. And thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto thee shall it come, even the first dominion, the kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. Now, why dost thou cry out aloud? Is there no king in thee? Is thy counselor perished? For pangs, that's pain, for pangs have taken thee as a woman in travail, like a woman given birth, you know. Verse 10, be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field, and thou shalt go even to Babylon. There shalt thou be delivered. There the Lord shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. Now also many nations are gathered against thee that say, Let her be defiled, and let her eye look upon Zion. You see, in the last days, Israel is going to be regathered, but the latter, last part of the verse, this scripture we just read, said that, you know, Israel was going to go into captivity. All right, Nahum, chapter 3, verse 10. Yet was she carried away. She went into captivity. Her young children also were dashed in pieces at the top of all the streets. And they cast lots for her honorable men, and all her great men were bound in chains. Thou also shalt be drunken, thou shalt be hid, thou also shalt seek strength because of the enemy. 
All thy strongholds shall be like fig trees with the first ripe figs. If they be shaken, they shall even fall into the mouth of the eater. You know, they shake the tree and open their mouth and the fruit falls right into it. You ever heard of a somebody, an enemy army said, well, we devoured them? Oh, yeah. Behold, thy people in the midst of thee are women. The gates of thy land shall be set wide open unto thine enemies. The fire shall destroy thy bars. Ooh, that doesn't sound good, does it? Nope, sure doesn't. All right, so let's see. Uh, let's see. All right, let's take a look at Jeremiah 24, verse 9. And we're going to stop. When we get to the New Testament, I'm going to stop and make that a part three, I think. Uh, and I will deliver them to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth for their hurt, to be a reproach and a proverb, a taunt and a curse, in all places whither I shall drive them. Oh, okay, we already read that. Hold on. All right, well, this is going to be part two of the mystery of the fig tree. We're going to hit the New Testament on part three. So I wanted to close out. So we did prove, what was it, Isaiah, it said that Israel was a vine. And I believe I gave you enough stuff to look that the fig tree is Judah. It's indicative. It's, it's their symbol. So we're getting ready to go to the New Testament. So this is the end of part two. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.